if your goal is to stay calm in life during difficult times, during scary times, or just during your daily life, then it is wise to look towards the ancient Stoics. If you'd look towards Emperor Marcus Aurelius, a man who lived during the Antonine Plague, the Marcomannic Wars, he was on the battlefield. He had multiple assassination attempts on his life, even from his close ones. He had to run the Roman Empire during such a difficult time, yet he remained calm. Epictetus, who was a slave, he had a very torturous and difficult life, yet he always remained calm. Today's episode is powered by Huel. Let's jump into the episode. How did the Stoics remain calm during difficult times? It was their philosophical teachings that helped them remain calm. Because the Stoics believed that it's not about reading these philosophical teachings. It is about soaking them into the mind. Stoicism was founded on one mantra, a mantra given to the founder, Zeno of Cetium, after he was shipwrecked. The Delphic Oracle said to him that he needs to dye his mind with the colours of dead men. So, Zeno went and read Socrates, the works of Socrates, and he soaked his mind with the colours of Socrates, who was a dead man. But then this became the way of the philosophy. It's not just about reading these words, learning about these words. It's about dyeing your mind with these words, soaking them into your soul. So you learn these words over and over again. You practice them in your life. You understand them to your core. And understanding these following teachings will help you become calm, really calm, in your daily life or during the most difficult times when everyone is chaotic and frantic, you're calm because it doesn't help to be chaotic. It doesn't help to be frantic. Calmness helps. And the first quote that ever got me into Stoicism from Mox Aurelius was to be like the rock that the waves crash over. It stands unmoved. I wanted to be that rock. That's why I first got into Stoicism and I've learned a lot from Stoicism and I've become so much calmer about everything. So the first understanding comes when you understand that you have space, you have time and you can pause. You can always pause. So when you're presented with something, if you just remember that you have this pause, you'll find great confidence. You're presented with a scary situation or a challenge or someone trying to antagonize you. You do not have to jump straight into the arena. You are allowed time to pause. And this time can feel very long, but it only has to be a few seconds. And what this is, this pause is to just stop Reflect and assess. It's the three A's. Awareness, assessment, action. The awareness happens when you see the thing that happens. Someone provokes you, someone tries to antagonize you. And then normally people go straight to action. They are antagonized, they jump to action. Something scary happens, they jump to action. They're irritated, they jump to action. They're faced with a challenge, they jump to action. But there's that middle space that people miss the assessment. So someone antagonizes you, you have a few seconds to assess. And these assessments, after studying Stoicism for a long time, become much more valuable. You become better at assessing what is and what is not, and what things really are, and what you should really do. But even with little knowledge of these things, the assessment is a very useful tool because you see the person try to antagonize you. They're across from the road and they've said something rude to you, this random stranger. Now assess it. Just quickly, what do I value from jumping in and intervening and, and getting provoked by this person? 
Could this person be carrying a knife? Could this person be carrying a gun? Is this person really a threat? Is this person drunk and just saying random stuff? Does this, is it worth me going over there and fighting with this person? Is it worth me getting involved with this discourse? Is it worth me escalating this discourse? Is it worth me wasting my time, embarrassing myself in front of so many people, getting involved in this thing, putting myself in danger? And after the assessment, which is a few seconds, it feels like a long time, you can take your action. Maybe it is worth you getting involved. Maybe they're harming someone. Maybe they're a danger to someone else and you think, I need to step up and do this. But oftentimes you'll realize these things don't matter. And as the Stoics say, you don't need to make this into something that it's not. All it is is a random passerby saying some words. And then they pass by and they're gone. And the words are no more. And the person doesn't exist in your universe. And you can go about your day. So then you must accept that which you cannot control. Of course, the Stoics were huge on this. The foundations of Stoicism were built on the dichotomy of control. Understanding you don't control the external world. Understanding you control the internal world. So having confidence, as Epictetus says, in that which you don't control, creates calmness. When you're presenting yourself to the world... You don't control how you're received. You don't control the applause. You don't control the likes and respect. You don't control any of this. You do control how you present yourself. So, as Epictetus says, be cautious about how you present yourself. Study how to present yourself. Practice how to present yourself. Get better at presenting yourself to the world. And by present presentation, I mean being the true you, being a good person that's what's important and be confident in the external because you don't control it however you're perceived that's up to the universe who really cares but you be cautious about that which you do control and confident that once you've put your released control into the world you've said your statement you've acted your act you've done your deed you've pursued your goal you've faced your challenge with courage and wisdom and integrity. Once you've let go, it is out into the universe. And that is where the confidence must be. A quick word from our sponsor, Huel. I really like Huel. When I was writing my book, I was using Huel to power me through every single day. When I had my daily greens, when I had my meals, when I had my shakes, it stopped me from going to the shop, buying a load of rubbish, buying a load of unhealthy food, wasting loads of money. And these things do add up. Those quick journeys to the shop every day, the money adds up, the unhealthy foods add up, the wasted time adds up. So if I ever get those cravings, I grab a Huel and it fills my cravings. I feel good. It tastes delicious. It's quick and easy. And if you have any interest in the Huel products, then check the link in the description. Let's get back to the episode. The universe has changed. So when we're so worried and nervous and anxious about what if this happens, what if that doesn't happen, what if I never do that, what if this changes. The universe is change and the universe is in a constant change and the universe is always changing. It's one of the only truths of the universe. It's one of the only things that is given of the universe. The universe is change. And this understanding, the universe is just changing. One thing is here that day, it's gone the next day. This person is in your life, then they're out of your life. This person is this way, the world is behaving that way. All these things are just flowing and changing and interweaving and there's nothing you can do about it. So just accept it. Accept it as it is. Have confidence that these changes are happening for a purpose. Whatever that purpose may be, the universe has got you back. The universe is laying out your fate and you're accepting it. You're loving it as it comes. And then we start to understand that nothing is truly unbearable. So we start to get scared of things that this is too scary. This is too much anxiety. This is too difficult. This is too painful. 
nothing is truly too much. Nothing. Because as the Stoics say, if pain ever became too much, then we would be carried away from that pain and we'll be given peace, which of course is death. We're at rest, we're at peace because it was too much. We're never giving too much than we can handle. The universe understands this. The universe gives us what we can handle. And if we can't handle it, then our time is over. So there's nothing, whilst we're experiencing it, that we can't handle. Nothing is truly unbearable. And with worry and anxiety and panic, you know, anxiety is made worse because we believe that it can get worse and it can get unbearable. So with panic attacks and anxiety attacks, we believe that it will become so unbearable and our imagination creates such a monster out of this that we worry and have anxiety that it will get worse. There's this loop going around. We believe it will get worse, so we worry it will get worse and then the worry makes it worse and we believe it will get worse, so we worry that it will get worse and it keeps feeding back and back and back. It will never become unbearable. You've dealt with these things before. If you've had panic attacks before, you've dealt with panic attacks before. You know what they feel like. And you've, you've faced the worst of it. In life, we've often faced the worst things. We've faced our worst fears at a young age and we've dealt with them. We know how that felt. And things won't get worse than this. Pain is never truly unbearable. I started to use this recently. I had nerve pain in the left side of my face and my eye and my mouth and my head was really hurting. Um, it's why I, I didn't upload for two days because my face was swollen and I couldn't speak very well. And I was on medication. I'm still on medication. But I understood that this pain, it's not unbearable. And in a week's time, two weeks time, a month's time, it will pass. It'll be a memory. I won't be able to feel that pain anymore. And then I kept thinking, but what if I have this pain for life? Well, then one day I will die and feel no pain. I'll be at peace from the pain. It will never last forever. It will never become too unbearable. And the pain is almost gone. And I'm glad I had that frame of mind. Because in the past, maybe I would have worried that this pain will get worse and worse and it will go on longer and longer and I'll be filled with anxiety and worry. So then we start to understand all these things. We start to develop gratitude. Gratitude is one of the most important tools in life. We start to be grateful for what you have and not feel empty for what you do not have your life will start to become more full. You'll start to feel so calm because you feel like you have abundance. You feel like the universe is looking out for you because we feel frantic. We feel there's an urgency to grab things. We feel we need to attain things because that's what we're taught in a society that the attainment of things make our lives feel more full. They'll make you feel more empty because you have less of yourself. So have gratitude for what you have. Understand that these things truly are a blessing. Think about the things you have, the loved ones, the friends, the sky, the walks, the trees, the birds, the sun shining through the window, the music you have, the rain hitting the window, everything your thoughts, you have this. It's a beautiful gift. When you be grateful for this, and you really are grateful for this, you become calm. Because you feel good. You feel grateful. You feel like the universe has got your back. The universe has given you so many gifts and abundance. It's a nice feeling. And then we start to understand one of the most important things in life and something that will give you a great sense of calm. The, your life that you're handed to you is a wooden block and it's given to you at the start of your life. And the mistake we make is we believe that we cannot change this wooden block, that this is who you are, 
So if you're an anxious, scared, worried person, you're a person that's not calm, then you see this block in front of you. You see yourself in the mirror and you say, this is who you are. You're anxious, you're nervous, you're worried, you're weak, you have no direction. And you hold that. But the universe has changed and you are part of the universe. You are changed, you are capable of molding yourself into something new, something beautiful. Because you also hold the tools to shape that block, to create it into the way that you want to. The universe has changed and you are no exception. You can become who you want to be and change can happen overnight, it can take years, but change does happen if you put your energy in the right place. Where your attention goes, energy flows. Start to put your attention into these things that we're learning about at Stoic School. And the energy will flow there. And where energy flows, there's progress, there's change. And then, with that, we have something that gives great calm. Understanding that anything that has happened to you in the past, you know, you, you lost a relationship, fell apart, you got fired from a job, you had to move country. You start to understand and you look back on these things and go, I see why that happened. I see why that relationship ended. It wasn't right for me and it led me to a better relationship. I understand why I was fired from that job. I didn't even like that job. I mean, that's the reason I was fired. It's because I had no passion for it. I had no enjoyment for it. And I was not performing very well. And it led me to finding a job I was passionate about or finding balance in life because that job was overbearing. And when you understand this about your past, and you can look back on your past and reflect like this, that even a robbery, I was watching one of PewDiePie's old videos recently. Uh, PewDiePie was, well, he is a YouTuber, but he was the most subscribed YouTuber, he was huge, like on another level to anyone else. He was the first to 100 million subscribers when everyone else had like 10 million. And he was robbed. And he was reflecting on this and he learned so much from this. And I thought that was the catalyst to him learning about philosophy, learning about Diogenes and the Stoics, and then branching off into other life philosophies and, and becoming someone new and, and finding balance in life. And, and he, he stopped his materialism. He, he used to be quite materialistic with his clothes. And then he stopped this. He got rid of all his belongings, or most of his belongings. He threw away his play buttons. Uh, someone found them in a bin. And him being robbed was, I believe, a positive thing for him. But at the time, he couldn't see this. So he can ref probably, maybe he can reflect on the past and say, I'm glad I got robbed. It led to me uh, moving away from all this materialism, moving away from the pursuit of getting all these subscribers. Um, I gave all that up. I started to find a balanced life. I started enjoying life. It seems more whole. It seems more balanced now in life. Um, so if you can look at your past and think this, then you can look at your present and go, what's happening to me right now will soon be a part of the process. And I'll reflect on this and say, I'm glad that this happened, this challenge that was presented to me. I'm glad that it happened because now I was presented with this challenge. When you get to the future, you're able to help people that are going through that same challenge. You become a mentor and a leader. So that is it for day 36 of 100 Stoic School with myself, William Mulligan. I hope you can start soaking these words and become calm. Because it's about soaking it up. It's about really reflecting on these things, putting your attention and your energy to these things. And you start to become calm. Thank you for listening. And if you're on Apple or Spotify and you've been listening to me and you want to support me, give me a rating. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, and share this with someone else. Um, that maybe you want to introduce them to these stoic teachings. Maybe you want to help them. Maybe you want to help your roommate become a better roommate. Thank you, and I hope you have a beautiful day.